Hey guys, it's Jonah here, back, back with another beer review, but that will be in a few minutes time. Um, because, uh, yeah, I had, I've got a couple of uh, new bits um, of news. Uh, yeah, one, one pretty good and one a, a little bit sad. So yesterday I didn't do a proper beer review uh, upload, although I opened my new beer box because I was at this. Uh, Meet the Brewer Showcase at McNaid's in, um, yeah, in Faversham. Sorry, I'm, bits and bobs are falling out. There are, there were lots of beers to choose from, some on the back as well, which was really cool. Not going to go through all of them. And I stupidly left my phone at home, so I didn't. I couldn't take any pictures or videos and stuff, which is just absolutely crazy. But I've got a couple of things I thought I'd show you. So one of the interesting things which I've talked about recently is Wild Beer, um, who are now, and this is advertising their Bibble uh, Pale Ale, they are now owned um, by Curious Brew, who are in Ashford, uh, Ashford Kent that is, um, not too far away from where I live and I spoke to them and apparently they're keeping uh, the Somerset, um, is it Somerset? Bath? Somewhere around there but they're keeping the original wild beer uh, kind of, they call it a barrel vault or something like that because they've got loads of sour beer projects that are in barrels like conditioning and barrel aging that Curious Brew will slowly, slowly release um, over the upcoming months, years, etc., etc. And I had a couple of their beers and I had a couple of the Wild Beer beers, um, which were, were pretty good. Um, but yeah, Wild Beer, the new beers from them are going to be brewed um, in Ashford. They'll still be called Wild Beer, but they'll be in Ashford. Um, the yeah, the Somerset Brewery apparently is not going to brew any longer. So no new brews from them, but there will be some barrel age projects. They're the sour beers, essentially. They're going to release a few sour beers. Um, so sad in one way, um, but good in another way, because I'm going to have access to a lot of wild beer, which is kind of cool. And I wanted to let you guys know about this. This is another beer mat. These are guys called Moot, uh, Moot Brew House or Brewery. That's probably the side you would like because you want to pause this video and have a look at the link. These are a new brewery. They used to be doing some gypsy brewing in Brixton or out of Brixton, I believe it was. Um, but they are now in Upper Halling or Upper Hailing, I think it is. I'm not sure. It's over near Rochester, which again is my part of the world. It's another Kent brewery, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, they're very near to a place called Diggerland. So if you know where Diggerland is uh, near Roch uh, Rochester, you will know where that is. The reason I'm saying these guys, Moot, they are actually opening their tap room um, at that address. It's on a farm, but they're opening their tap room next Saturday, uh, which is, is it 31st? I think it is, 31st of March. Um, yeah, which is pretty cool. So if you're in the area, if you're local, or if you fancy a day out and go to a brand new uh, opening tap room, stroke brewery, get yourself along to that one. Really, really cool. Um, the other thing about Nacknade is they gave me, and this isn't the one I was using, they gave you a really nice booklet with scorecards. Um, I don't know if you can see, but they've got a very intricate kind of, they've called it flavour wheel, but you can create your own spider diagrams. How random is that? So when you now have a sort of a beer marking passport, um, from a new bruise. Um, I think that's really cool. Uh, obviously, I met up with some of my old muckers from work. Um, 
Greg or Greg, as I always call him. Don't know why I do. It's a Scottish thing, I think. Uh, Stephen and Teen, his uh, his girlfriend. Um, really, really nice to see those guys. And um, yeah, we had. Well, I had because I was scoring twenty one different beers and ciders. Uh, I think I only had three, three or four ciders. So almost 20, 20 beers, 21 beers. That's better than I did at the GBBF. They were a lot smaller. They were only short tasting kind of glasses. Um, but I guess probably three, four pints worth, maybe something like that. But fun was had by all. Really, really good evening. Fantastic. Um, yeah, to see um, to see people. The sad news was I found out that my old manager, my line manager, and he used to be um, higher up in the company, Andrew, um, has died. So really, really sad news. And my uh, my heart goes out to his family. This beer review goes out to him. Um, so, yeah, as I've said before, um, please make sure you tell your loved ones that you love them because you're never you're never sure how long these people are going to be around for. Um, and he. Yeah, I didn't know him that well, um, didn't go out for beers with him, but he was a really good guy to me when I had um my cancer diagnosis and my treatment and not once did he put up any kind of barrier for me so yeah he was he was a good guy um yeah so that that's it that's it so the beer we're going to be drinking today um is the last one from the southwest box um and this one is one of the special 10 boxes because I do the slightly larger box, uh, which is called, if it will focus in there, Lost in Plain Sight. And yeah, it's not, that's weird, it's not focusing. Come on, dude, focus. There we go. Lost in Plain Sight, and it's by a brewery called Lost and Grounded. Uh, they're from Bristol or Bristol over in the West Country. Um, and there's a nice link there because there is a, um, a graffiti artist called Banksy that you might well know. He has been hanging around in, um, in my neck of the woods, but he's allegedly from Bristol, uh, which is where my good buddy went to university. I've been there a few times. Really cool place to go. Uh, my other good friend uh, lives there now, or he lives slightly outside, but not too bad. So if you look over here, whoops, at the old tasting note, we, uh, or the spider wheel, we look and we find it's another Star Trek type one. And that can mean only one thing. It's a hoppy pale ale uh, in the new style. It says it's an easy drinking pale ale, uh, packing citrusy orange and peach flavors with the dry hops of Citra and El Dorado adding more layers of tropical fruits to the style. It's got wheat and oats in, adding a creamy and soft mouthfeel, leading to a resinous finish. Uh, the hops, we've got Magnum Chinook, uh, which are guesser for the bittering and stuff, and then Citra and El Dorado, El Dorado, um, which is gonna be in the dry hop. And here we have the can. Pretty trippy, lost in plain sight. Um, it's another one of these weird sort of art work. If you, if you look at it, it looks like it's been painted um, on a canvas and then they've sort of printed it out and put it on here. And it says, not all who wander are lost, which is, yeah, a quote from uh, Lord of the Rings. And uh, yeah, Lost and Grounded, Whitby Road, uh, Bristol BS4. So Reesme Central, not right in the middle, but Reesme Central. And it says 4.8% on the ABV. Drink by November. So 
for a change, I'm drinking a beer that's well within its date, which is always good. And this has been in the fridge for at least a week now, which I think is amazing for me. But I've been doing lots of weird stuff this week. And next week, it's going to get even more busy for me um, because uh, the Weatherspoons Beer Festival, the Spring Beer Festival is happening. There's also some ca a camera meeting. Uh, two actually that I'm going to let's do no that's not going to work is it let's do one of these lost in plain sight <laughs> something like that who knows oh lovely stuff well over a finger's head not two so we're talking maybe a finger and a quarter something like that it was pouring very clear and then all of a sudden when the last bit of the can went in there, it went a bit cloudy. So it's kind of in the new style. But look at those bubbles, lovely and white bubbles, uh, which I like to see. Almost looks like a kind of Guinnessy kind of style beer. Because it was also St. Patrick's Day yesterday. So yeah, by uploading my beer unboxing, I didn't do a, a Guinness review. I did have a Guinness as well, in addition to all the other stuff. Quite resinous, quite piney. Um, quite sharp as well. Um, so this is going to be interesting. It just says it's a pale ale. It's not, yeah, it's not using that dreadful. Oh, I don't know if you can see. I probably should have done that at the beginning, but never mind. Can you read that underneath? Of course you can't because it's not focusing. But that does say pale ale. There we go. Not. I mean, IPA is a pale ale, technically. Session IPA is a pale ale, but it, Session IPA actually is pale ale. <laughs> Cheers and beers, guys. Oh, zesty, really nice and zesty, which I thought it was going to be. Zesty in a kind of grapefruit way, a little bit juicy too. There is a bit of that orange there. I'd say more kind of, hmm. Yeah, more blood orange, kind of that sort of way, or perhaps a red grapefruit or a pink grapefruit, that kind of thing. Yeah, really nice. Not very sweet. Weirdly, that there are oats and wheat in here, and it's supposed to give a creaminess, and usually in sort of Nipah styles, it does. In this, not so much. Um, maybe we shall experience some of that creaminess. But yeah, I was expecting it to be a bit more soft, but it is quite sharp. And there is that kind of green resinous um, backbone. Um, and citra is quite an interesting choice to dry hop with. Um, so there is that kind of green, kind of hedgerowy, sort of hedge, hedge bush or grass cuttings, that kind of uh, thing to it. But that's late on. This is all about the kind of fruity bit up front. So let's go in, dear viewer, as always, for a second sip. Ooh. lovely jubbly there are some nice tide lines on the glass as well i don't know if it's the way i drink but i don't tend to get the lacing anymore in a traditional sense but i am drinking more um canned beer um but over the upcoming week dear viewer i'm going to be drinking i'm going to be attempting to drink all 30 beers um, from the Camera Spring Beer Festival, which is a task because they never put all beers on at the same time. So it's gonna involve me searching out certain beers at, at, at some points um, and basically drinking out in pubs, 
near enough the, all the 10 days that the beer festival is on. Um, so that's going to be a challenge. Oh. But I managed to drink 21 different individual drinks. Well, 22 if you include the Guinness as well when I got home. So drinking 30, I'm really up for that challenge. Alas, though, it means I might not be doing so much recording. So, dear viewer, if you want to see what I'm up to, now is the time to get on Untapped. I always put my handle from Untapped in the descriptions of the video. So go down in there, get on Untapped, um, and uh, yeah, you'll find out what I'm drinking on what day. You can even drink along if you join me in uh, in the largest Weatherspoons in the country, which is the Royal Victoria Pavilion. Uh, on Ramsgate Beach. It's a sandy beach and I'm going to be drinking beer starting on Wednesday. If you're in the local area, Wednesday seven o'clock, the Royal uh, Victoria Pavilion, that is exactly where I'm going to be. So come and join me. Um, we'll share some, uh, some beers together and talk some old toot. Yeah, look, there's a third mini tide line down there. On the back side, though, there's sort of more sort of skiddies, <laughs> if you know what I mean, which makes uh, make things a bit more interesting. Um, so what have we got coming up video-wise? Well, like I say, probably not going to be doing so many videos from Wednesday next week onwards. Although you never know, I might sneak a few beers in. Uh, for the next, well, the beer festival lasts 10 days uh, in total, but hopefully I'll have drunk all the beers, you know, before that. But you, you, you never know. I'm, like I say, I might have to go searching for certain beers, which is, yeah, never the best thing to do. But, yeah, they never put them on in the same order as well, which is a bit weird as well. Um, but tomorrow I have another supermarket Sunday. So I've been back in the supermarket and got... Uh, got another couple of beers so I've got a special one that's kind of I can't really tell you what it is uh, when you find out what the beer is you'll go ah, oh, that's not special at all but it is special occasion wise um, so that one's a time bound one so I have to be a bit careful uh, which Sunday I released that beer on um, but I have one lined up for tomorrow so that's fine and as you saw yesterday if you were looking um, I also am going to be starting doing my beers from the uh, Yorkshire box um, from the beer 52. Ooh, oh, pardon me, a little bit gassy that beer, um, which came a couple of days ago, but it was with my neighbour because the delivery company didn't tell me that they dropped the beer off. So I probably could have started already, but alas, I haven't. But it's given me a chance to finish the Southwest box. And I also know that I need to do the uh, the upload video for the beer of the box, which was the previous one, which was the Spanish box. I've got it here. So I might do that over the next couple of days. Um, so there will be some content, but perhaps uh, less beer uh, content, which is gonna be a bit crazy. Anyway, this has been Uncle Jonna. Lots of talking of old toot, and um, yeah, it's a real shame about uh, Andrew um, because he was a little bit standoffish, I have to say. But like I say, he was really good to me um, when I needed some help at work. Um, and things like that go a long way in my book because a lot of time work do not give you time off or time to do things and I had a reasonable amount of time uh, and only one week of it was written down as sick leave um, because we came up with a plan for doing moving shifts around and all sorts of weird stuff so thank you very much sir and uh, yeah you will be always be remembered by me um, as one of the good guys anyway this has been Uncle Jono please consider clicking like to this video if you've liked all the updates and my uh, talking and rambling and all that kind of stuff and of course the beer review itself um, and this time 
it was for this beer, Lost in Plain Sight, by Lost and Grounded from Bristol. That is quite a nice beer. Cheers and beers, guys. We'll see you tomorrow if you're, if you're up for a supermarket Sunday. And if not, you guys have a good weekend, and I'll see you real soon.